So important life application here, dealing with wine. When you put in a bottle some amount of wine and you try to cork it up, if you hit the cork in, if there's a bit of air in there, that's okay because gases can compress. Of course, that introduced more difficulty for us to work with, but for our purpose, this little air pocket can act as a cushion so that the bottom won't break. But in this case, you got a little greedy and you fold up your wine bottle and as you hit it, the liquid doesn't compress. And this leads us to what we call Pascal's principle. When you add additional pressure up top, it doesn't actually squeeze the liquid, it just pushes all the liquid down some more and then you have added pressure on the bottom as well. And here's the funny thing, the pressure that you add is exactly the same. Now that's the same pressure, but not the same force. We'll call that one and two. So that's force one over area one divided by force two over area two. If on the one end, your area is way bigger than on the other end, you get a way bigger force as well. And that's exactly what's happening here because we're dealing with an incompressible liquid. So that's why when you tap it with not a huge force, I run 20 Newton force on top. Once you take it through this calculation and keep it in centimeter because it's going to cancel top and bottom and not to mix up diameter with radius. Don't forget to divide by two. A number of things cancels out. So here you basically have seven squares. So that whole thing becomes 49. So your forces becomes 49 times more than what you apply on top, giving you 5.9 kilonewtons. So the textbook has already discussed various ways that this principle gets applied, and you can look at that. Uh, just as a quick comparison, if you look at just the static fluid, right? Let's say the bottle was, I don't know, 30 centimeters tall. If you work it out, the pressure due to the fluid pressure, which is again, rho GH, we're only talking about 2.9 kilonewton extra. You provide another 5.9 kilonewton, so it's no surprise that the bottom would break away. You might have seen this done in reverse when people talk about opening a wine bottle without using a corkscrew. If you're caught somewhere, you have a bottle of wine, don't have a corkscrew, but you really want to drink it, what the heck do you do? You want to push up on the cork, but if you have this air pocket here, that's not going to work. So that's why all these steps ask you to put the wine bottle sideways so that the air bubble that's on top ends up over here. So that when you hit it with either a shoe or against the wall within a shoe or whatever it is, that pressure does transfer to over here, even though it's going to be a much smaller force, you're still getting some force to push it slowly up and up and up, eventually out and you get your wine. Important life skill brought to you by physics.